Live. You're listening to Live with Men, 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 the podcast. So this is Men, 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 the podcast. My name is Nadia. We're back. Again, as always, thank you. Kwakila Mutamba, I'm going to come back to Skeliza. We appreciate that. Reach out and then to Ambio, I'm going to talk to Ambio, and then we'll see come up what we can do ever to discuss it. We don't know if we discuss. I'll come and talk to Skeliza and Nadia. I always say, Nadia, I'm your biggest plug right now. But come on talk about Nadia she's now on Twitter at Mind Matters TZ Mind Matters TZ both Twitter and Instagram and then kwenye bio yake kuna link ambayo ukiingia uki kwenye link to definitely take you kwenye website yake and then unaweza kuasiliana kwa reason from there as always hataki kutoa namba yake ya simu so hata tu namba ya simu don't slide on my DM kwa namba Nadia namba ya Nadia I am just not going to do that what's the biggest flag <laughs> yeah, hey, as the biggest flag, you don't give out your number. Yeah. You don't, you don't, you don't. Um, who take you up to our US supplier? Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, but uh, I need to continue being, being the flag. You good idea. Yeah. And what a little we are joined with Princely Glorious. That's a very, that's a very unique name, Princely <laughs> Glorious. Yeah. First of all, for starters, Princely. Yes. Where did that you know the talk about? Um so the name is, is from my parents. Uh my 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 dad and my mom. I think actually my dad he, he told us he'd been praying for us with our names even mm-hmm. before wow. we were born. I want to say my dad. Oh man, and I told me sana. Nice. And so he, you know, the, the name is kind of a was a prophecy for us and I've not done enough to live up to it but we we're, we're on we on our way. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Chris is uh, Chris is with us um and then mm-hmm. he's doing a lot of things uh especially for the uh, creative industry mm-hmm. and you are kwa watu ambao mnamfuatilia mpo Twitter na Instagram on a page ambayo inaitwa Honor Stories. Yes. So they do a lot of they do a lot of interesting stuff. So you can yes. check that out on Honor Stories. And, and again, I'll be your plug for you. <laughs> come on, you want to do some activities, yeah. especially on your social media, mm-hmm. social media production, social story media telling. work, mm-hmm. storytelling, basically mm-hmm. storytelling. I know you guys did the whole AR thing, mm-hmm. artificial, yes, yes. Um, augmented reality, augmented mm-hmm. reality, and yeah. virtual reality. So yeah, we're we're pioneering um, the future of storytelling in, in Tanzania and in East Africa as well. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, now, yeah. Now, yeah. You never know what yeah. might happen. You yeah. know, storytelling and yeah. you know all that. So yeah, talking about Prince Lebar, then a little bit about to the it to be very interesting. Mm-hmm. Being a man in the age of feminism, definitely. Yeah. Mm. But for starters, um, what I would like to know, Prince Lee, yes. your take on feminism and yes. Nadia. Yes. I know Nadia has a very strong view when it comes to feminism, but I would not just I would just like to know what's your take on the whole concept yeah. of feminism. Yeah, so so um feminism I think uh, the the background of of feminism when you read people like Bell Hooks and more recently you read people like uh, Chimamanda um what what feminism is as it, at its essence is just a call for us as a world to view men and women as equal, right? And that's I think that's just what it you know that's what should be. We should all view um men and women as fundamentally equal different yes but equal right and um so i think when the movement began the, those were the the underpinnings the 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 foundations yeah. of the movement mm-hmm. um what a lot of men at least what i've seen uh, a lot of men have issue with the current take of of feminism mm-hmm. is is that we have had uh, over the over, over the past few years mm-hmm. um a brand of of feminism that has kind of dominated the narrative that is a little more militant mm. a little more aggressive good it was a brand of feminism right yeah. now it's totally alternative yeah. so una wasema tume a little bit more militant mm-hmm. a little bit more aggressive yeah. break it down for me what yeah. do you mean so 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 what i mean is um that there's a narrative and i'm not talking about um feminism i have to be super careful you know i'm not a, i'm not a woman here so <laughs> and that's the, that's the, the, the biggest thing it's like it yeah. feels like feminism is for women yeah no but well, i mean women believe that i, I, I mean i have to be something. careful how i phrase it yes. because I'm, i'm you know i'm not the one who's going through the struggles women go through yeah right mm. um but but there's, there's 
there's a narrative that has gone around and, and when I'm saying a narrative going around I mean on, on social media platforms mm. I mean in the real world with people you meet mm. um, where it's it's kind of anti-men mm. you know as though you know there's there's a lot of talk of toxic masculinity and um, yeah there's there's definite parts of, of um, our traditional views of masculinity that are toxic but then when the narrative becomes that anything that is remotely masculine <laughs> is toxic and should be uprooted from society then you, you start alienating mm. men right while the original point of, of, of feminism is not to alienate men mm. is to bring both men and women together and say hey look um, our societies have been crap for a very long time they've kind of subjugated women they've put women down um, but uh, feminism is about viewing men and women as fundamentally uh, equal. Mm. So, uh, you know, I, I would say, you know, that we can, uh, if you view feminism from the lens of the equality uh, of, this, uh, of the sexes, then we should all be feminists. Mm. If you view fem- this, this militant, more aggressive um, narrative that has kind of become mm. anti-men mm. some people that I'm reading are starting to have a little issue with the label of feminism mm. but not with the values of, 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 of feminism, feminism yeah. right so the values of equality are great mm. but the label then becomes oh, okay I'm, I'm a little wary of calling myself a feminist because there's so many people who call themselves a feminist who have then, you know, kind of like bashed men and said men are dogs and men are trash, men are and, trash yeah. and, and, <laughs> and all of that. And, and it's, it's a very accepted narrative. You know, I can call men trash. I can't call women trash. Oh, that's sexist. But <laughs> don't, cross the line. <laughs> don't cross the line. Eh? You can say women are dogs. Or the other one that I can't use, <laughs> the <B-word>. um, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But men, men are dogs. Men are trash. Mm. Men yeah. are shit. Men are all these different. Mm. I don't know if you believe about words. Um, <laughs> men are all these different things. So, so then you start having an issue with the label, but yeah. not with the values. Yeah. So that's how I see it. Mm. Well, Nadia, Nadia usually I'm a semi humanist. Mm. <laughs> can you can you explain a little bit more on that, Nadia? Well, I feel. Is what Princely said that the the term feminism itself now has been so misconstrued. Mm. People take it and run with it mm. with their own agendas. Yeah. So we're losing the essence mm. of equality. The yeah. whole agenda was to reach to a state where men and women are treated as equals. Mm-hmm. Mm. All humans are created equal, mm-hmm. and so that's where I come with my I'm a human I'm a humanist mm. because if we're all created equal, then we can if we think of it from that angle, we can treat each other. Yeah. Equally, yeah. we can respect our uniquenesses, you know, and respect our differences. But then we're equal. Yeah. We're equal in how unique we are. Mm-hmm. And for me, that's that's what feminism was and mm-hmm. is in its core. The values of the feminism. value, yes. So I, I I also sometimes think of myself as an equalist. <laughs> you know, because humanism has its own set yes. of, of beliefs as well. Mm-hmm. You know, about, about that you know, that are a little more. Agnostic, let me say. But big words, um, today, big words. <laughs> but we get there. Get I mean, your dictionary. <laughs> we can also we can also break it down a little further. But so sometimes I think of myself as an equalist in mm. the sense of it's the same values as as, as feminism's basic values of men and women are equal. Mm. Uh, that human beings should be evaluated on. Uh, rather than their gender or their race or their um, upbringing or whatever, they should be evaluated by what they bring to the table. Yeah. Um, they should be evaluated on their merit, right? Mm. So meritocracy, mm. rather yeah. than another big word. Big word. <laughs> meritocracy, you know, basically that if you have the merit, you should get the job. You should if get you the have job. The yeah. merit, you should be valued according to what you're bringing to the table, mm. yeah. not anything, any label. In particular, yeah. so let's get back to what we are uh, now that you mentioned it for sure. If we send a feminism, yes, equalism or equalism, <laughs> humanism, whatever. <laughs> but, 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 <laughs> as long as we get the point, <laughs> it. now let's talk about the key to which is being a man mm-hmm. at this modern age, yes, of yes. feminism. Mm-hmm. Do we think, Kwamba, based on what you've just said, what both of you mentioned, yes. and of course, the dream of feminism, yeah. do you think it, becoming, it is becoming a little bit harder 
kuwa mwanaume katika uh, katika modern society ambayo ina ina inafuatilia na inashikilia sana swazi la feminism which is a good thing yeah. or, or based on the value yeah. ya yeah, uh, concept zima ya feminism ilipo yes, okay. yes. do you think it, it is making a little bit harder for men now to live in this um, society Chris? yeah so so i wouldn't say the like, so I've, i've spent a bit of time reading about historical views of men i've spent some time asking you know and, and kind of observing yeah. people like my dad uh, people before him etc and definitely the world was very different um if you were a man um 100 years ago than it is today um the, the largest difference has been uh, women in the workforce right that's that's probably been the the the, the biggest positive change um in 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 gender uh, relations where um in the past we had um primarily men working and women staying at home and doing the domestic uh, stuff mm-hmm. then we had this big shift um with the suffragette movement uh, the feminist movement mm-hmm. and getting women to uh, to work now what this did is that it changed men's um traditional role as the provider right mm-hmm. where it was just your expected role it was abundantly clear that as a man you, you are provide. the provider mm-hmm. that is your job um you provide you protect you preside because you provide and protect you also preside right mm-hmm. Th- that's your traditional masculine gender role mm-hmm. right um with women entering the workforce and making huge strides there with with them proving to the world that hey look mm-hmm. we can do the job just as well as as men. as men right um if not better in 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 certain instances R- that um role of the man as provider has been uh, uh changed in a sense right where um still and, and and this is this is a really weird dynamic because Keep still um, <laughs> still we have society kind of expecting men at, at least in, in, the, in the Tanzanian context mm. we have society kind of expecting men to be providers mm. right but then we have um this unprecedented or never before um seen you know 100 years ago um uh, we didn't have this phenomenon of uh women um also being able to provide mm. uh, for themselves so in in a sense men are getting these mixed messages from um <laughs> society and from uh from women where they're being told uh, i still expect you to pay for us when we go out for for a meal i still expect you to um you know mm. open the door and do all these uh, chivalrous things that she was dead but you know <laughs> but i still she was not dead i still <laughs> <it's> not dead <laughs> yeah. i still i still expect you to kind of have these traditional mm. roles but at the same time no we are <laughs> don't do some of these traditional things don't have uh, you know some of these so so it, it, yeah. it, it it's um, conflicting it's it's a bit conflicting uh mm. for men and so as a man you kind of have to center yourself around yourself in a sense that you have to think about hey what am what what am i bringing to to um to the table if i if i have a partner for example um what am i bringing to this partnership mm. because your traditional role where you would just be assumed that you're the provider it's a little more complex now right there's mm. maybe you have to provide more than just money and more than just um food uh, you know maybe like your previous episode you have to provide emotional you have to be the emotional as well you know so so the roles are changing i don't know if it's harder yeah. but the messages are definitely a lot more mixed mm. than than they were 100 years ago when things were a lot clearer if you're a man and you're a woman these are your societal expectations now do you do you face i mean your therapist so when it come to by kama baadhi watu naongea nao na vitu kama do you find people who are dealing with this thing or struggling with this thing yes and no mm. but mostly yes because we yeah. all struggle <laughs> um but yeah it does it is a theme that that pops up but yeah no these roles these shifting roles changing roles are really things that both men and women struggle with mm-hmm. because It's like there's this cognitive dissonance. Mm. You know there's this this battle in ourselves. Big worst day. Big yeah. worst day. You guys are killing. Me. You guys are killing. Me. There's this constant battle because as men, you've been raised 
you, you're raised observing other men. Mm -hmm. You grow up to learn how to be a man by mm -hmm. observing men. Mm -hmm. You can't observe mm -hmm. a woman to yeah. know how to be a man. Mm -hmm. You know, so you're growing up looking at this generation that came from a different time yeah. than where you exist today. Yeah. And that's how you learn yeah. on how it is and what it is to be a man. Mm -hmm. But then the meaning or what it takes to be a man now is slightly different yeah. to your grandfather or your father or the men that have lived before us. Yeah. And women, same thing. They look up to other women, their mothers, grandmothers, aunts, and etc., who've lived throughout time to learn how, to, how and what it means to be a woman. But then we're also very intellectual beings and we learn what it is to be a man, what it is to be a woman now in this time frame, mm -hmm. you know, with all these movements, with all this equality and freedom and, and all these other beautiful things that are happening now. And then that's where the struggle comes. It's because what I've learned from childhood, what it is to be a man, what it looks like and what it feels like and what it should be is different to what I'm kind of observing, reading about, and mm -hmm. seeing mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. So there's this constant battle, and for women the same. You know, they're raised see, like seeing or being told that you're supposed to be taken care of, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know, men are providers, they see that their fathers are providing, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. etc. So, but you grow up and you learn for yourself that, okay, mm -hmm. I can be a breadwinner too, mm -hmm. and I can put the food on the table, and I can be the security, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So there's this battle that, okay, this side of me who's learned unconsciously and consciously from childhood mm -hmm. what it is to be a woman, and this space where I'm now, where I've learned consciously what it is to be a woman. Mm -hmm. Through my own lived experience. Yes, mm -hmm. they're conflicting. Yeah. So there's a battle there. And I think that's where most of us have trouble, is yeah. because there is an internal battle. Yeah. We're often either lashing out mm -hmm. in our physical, real life context, mm -hmm. Or we're withdrawing altogether because we don't really get what's going on. We're so we're confused internally. Yeah. yeah. Basically, you know, which in a nutshell. Which is the big word, the cognitive dissonance yeah. that you began with. <laughs> confused yeah. internally. Yeah, yeah, internally. Yeah, you couldn't have said that. Like, no, big word translation. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I can't afford you for that. <laughs> I can't afford you for that service, but yeah. Yeah. So um what both of you have said, Nigeria Buku to edit at context yet yeah, Tanzania, Kibongo. Do you think any issue by both one of me want to translate or pity? How is Certain few about to go urban, mm. to mesoma, we expose and if it comes, do we feel come it's a struggle about how to an old member or work or work or inji urban setting and yet they experience the same thing? Yeah. Um so so a lot of the work that I do is um telling stories that kind of explain things, right? So I, I love a lot of what I'll shout do. out to honor stories. Yeah, shout out honor stories. Um honorstories.com. Yeah. Um <laughs> so a lot of what I'll do is, you know, basically give you a historical context mm -hmm. and kind of explain mm -hmm. things. Yeah. We we've got to remember that globally, before we even bring it back to Tanzania, uh, globally this this um, the suffragette movement, which is kind of the, the, the thing that kickstarted uh, women in the workplace. So for what? Um, the suffragette movement, which is the the mother of the mm -hmm. feminist movement. Mm -hmm. Go Google, Google that. Yeah. Go Google that. <laughs> Started, you know, around 1903, so roughly mm -hmm. 120 years ago, which in the context of human history, it seems like a long time ago, mm -hmm. but in the context of human history, which is thousands upon thousands of, of, of years, is not a very long time ago, mm -hmm. right? Um, so we, we, we kind of forget that this is a fairly new development in human history. Uh, this, this role of women um, becoming uh, viewed as equal, especially when it comes to providing and, and mm. breadwinning, mm. Um, is, is a fairly recent development in the, in the, in the grander context of, of human uh, nature. Now, when you bring it back to Tanzania, it's even more recent, right? Mm. Because um, um, w our generation, like uh, I think all of us in, in this room are kind of the same generation, our generation is, is probably in Tanzania the first generation where this kind of applies. So, yeah, our mothers also maybe mm. you know, were that transition uh, period where they started working, but definitely most of us, our grandmothers, were did not uh, work true. office jobs. Yeah? Yeah. Our grandmothers did not uh, were did not consider themselves breadwinners in any sense of mm. the word. Did not um, you know? So so we we are one or two generations yeah. in, yeah. right? And that's in the urban areas. 
uh, which is the, the, the question you asked. In the rural areas, it's even a little more um, uh, complex or like a, a little less, like the change has happened even more recently, mm. right? Yeah. Where um, men have still, uh, as much as 10 years ago, were still considered, and even in some cases up to today, mm. were still primarily the breadwinners who go out and work and women stay home and do the domestic uh, jobs and they do the care work and and men do the whatever. There's there's really good arguments right now, which is kind of like I'm I'm going on a tangent here. There's really good arguments mm-hmm. right now about that because men kind of designed these social systems that we kind of uh, live in in a sense. Um, we we didn't value care work as much as uh, breadwinning work yeah. because if we did value care work, we would be paying. Um, a, a women, even in the traditional yeah. roles, yeah. we would be paying them just as much as, yeah. as men were being yeah. paid for going out to look for food, yeah. right? Um, so, so in, in, in Tanzania, in the Tanzanian context, I don't think it's just an urban thing. Mm. I, I definitely, you know, I, I lived in, in uh, Iringa last year, um, and we used to do, you know, a lot of work in the villages around mm. there. Um, I come from Kilimanjaro, and yeah. we did have um, quite a few. You know, like my, my parents have um, work with people from really, really rural areas mm. and um, in, in all across Tanzania, including the Hadzabe and, and, yeah. and, and, and places like that. And in what we've, we're seeing, this this um, changing dynamics, they're not just changing in the urban areas, maybe more yeah. concentrated mm. and, 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 and the complexity is may, maybe a little more intense. Um, in, in, in the urban areas, uh, you know, because there's all these different influences. Yes. Um, but even uh, we went, I, I remember this is a long time ago, uh, 2008, we did a visit to, to the Hadzabe, the, the village elders and, and uh, the different people there, um, whether they would want their kids to go to school, etc. And the expectation was that people would say, uh, no, we don't want the girls to go to school, etc. Mm-hmm. But a lot of what we were hearing from them is that, oh, no, you're squeezy. Mm-hmm. So, so even in the farthest parts of, 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 of this country, yeah. that, that dynamic is changing. It's a positive um, it, it is. It's, it's, a, it's it is. A definitely it is. a positive change yeah. because we're bringing more of, of the human population to, towards education, towards mm-hmm. a better life. But it's also making it a little more complex because the cognitive dissonance yeah. that Nadia talked about. All these simplified <laughs> uh, the confused Internal meaning, conflict. Internal <laughs> conflict yeah. um, of having parents and grandparents mm. whose views on gender are yeah. very different from what you are experiencing in your yeah. own life. Yeah. Mm. There's definitely complexity there. There's definitely, yeah. you know, like an internal conflict that we all kind of go through. So as men, how do we live? <laughs> I mean, seriously. I, 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 I'm, yeah. but I'm just thinking now because especially we can get with social media. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of back and forth in Ayandere is first of all, um it's it's funny that when some of stuff that you care, especially mm-hmm. uh, on women, yeah. what to a lot of guys do us in the equality one. Yeah. You should do that on your own. I'll give yeah. you an example. The other yeah. day when we yeah. went so this lady tweeted a picture from her. Gary ni kwama kwenye madimbu lakini tukashindwa kushuka ikabidi subiri tu kwa naume waje tusaidie jamani mnaotaka usawa sala usawa naomba tuachane na you know cuz in your sala then when you go this is new to me you come like a tough thing again go with my name quit and then it generated a whole discussion a whole yeah. discussion and you know how to go get to know the what to do like me i want to take that as an example in terms of how um, we are thinking right now, yeah. you know, in terms of how we are thinking. So, so uh, how do we live? Yeah. And, and then how do we learn to coexist as well? Because that's also a whole... Yeah. Now, I, I think this is something I've spent some time, you know, thinking about and reading about. Mm-hmm. And, and I think when we um, view the fundamental value of feminism, right, mm-hmm. which is the equality between the sexes, mm-hmm. and forget anything else that the label might mean to mm. different individuals. Yeah. Um, if, if we're looking at it from the perspective of men and women are equal, I don't think 
thinking of men and women as equal necessarily means denying the differences between the sexes mm. right there's one very glaring uh, difference i have a thing is you have a vagina we definitely mm. are different mm. um but there are also um biological differences yeah. psychosocial um uh, differences uh, social economic differences that we get, and physical differences mm. you, um that that you can't Uh, that I think saying men and women are equal doesn't mean you should deny these these differences mm-hmm. which is a very um subtle thing right keep going because <laughs> like you're saying you could look at that example of uh, women stuck mm-hmm. uh, in in a, in a water something that needs probably a little more physical uh, prowess and they had to call on men and then the argument there it's, it's very easy for someone to say ha 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 yeah. look at you feminist <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly what i mean yeah. Yeah. that is exactly <laughs> what i mean <laughs> <laughs> right it's it's very easy to kind of default uh to that mm. but that's that's that misunderstanding of uh, the the equal but different but that, but that, do you think that misunderstanding yeah. emulate to based on how people treat feminists no definitely definitely yeah. emulate to based on how people definitely. Treat because we're swimming in a pool we we made ourselves yeah because yes. now exactly because yeah. feminism what to english could come an attack against that. exactly so if there's that's still just poor there are definite that's sections how it feels for most exactly people. there's there are definite sections of of feminism that are very loud on on twitter very very loud on social media that are extremely anti men yeah. right and and every single day you go um online on twitter at least when i go online on twitter there's definite um sections of my twitter uh, the people i follow on twitter yeah. who i love um but they disclaimer i want to give you a skills of um <laughs> but who are you know certainly there's definitely this yeah. this very anti men streak of yeah. men are trash ha 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 oh, <laughs> men are virus all <laughs> 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 this yo corona guys you know you got to do ha ha men are trash men are corona men are corona <laughs> and men are the virus on this earth sijui ni nini nini watu na kuna mmoja juzi nimeona watu na nimekia corona wakati tumekuwa tuna virus hapa You know, for men. You know. Wow. Jesus Christ. So this is traumatizing for us. Really traumatizing. You know, there's there's definite um um sections which which then people kind of lump together and say hiyo ndo feminism, mm-hmm. right? Um ila ndo maana nasema I think hata Nadia na mimi tulianza kwa kusema hiyo level bana wao tuweke pembeni kidogo kwa yeah, sasa yeah. ni sema tuangalie basi value ya equality yeah. sasa ni rahisi mtu kusema kwamba um, kama tuko equal si usikume gari lako mwenyewe mm. you know yeah. while tunaja tuna, tuna kama you you're closing your eyes to the differences between the sexes mm. and there are definite physical differences between men and women mm. men are generally larger and stronger than than mm. women Physically, this yeah. is a biological fact yeah. it's yeah. not an anime and men generally excel more at physical stuff uh, than than women uh, the, there's uh, you know and, and this could sound controversial mm-hmm. when i say men are uh, better th- than women at physical stuff but it's not it's just a biological uh, fact not every man is stronger than every woman mm-hmm. in the world but as a general yeah. rule you know there was, there was that example in in in, in soccer uh, 10 or so years ago where i think it was the swedish uh, women's team um or I don't, some women's team had won the the world cup mm. and they played against a professional 15 year old team and they were thrashed like 7 nil right and these are guys who've won the world cup they and yeah. just just because men are a little stronger a little faster a little um, more yeah. agile than women generally so you have the cream of the crop from one side and a bunch of literally 15, 15 to 18 year olds yes. uh, playing for the under 15s so it's it's just it's 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 factual yeah. right those differences so in that in that in that example kusukuma uh, gari it's just that they these guys were a little stronger than than the women but, but Presley, the uh, thing is based on i yo channel to care the social media discussions that were there i feel like to go at a point about we don't even want to listen to each other. Yes. Mm. We really really don't want to listen to each other. Definitely. So it's like you any everybody on their own right yeah. now like men are sticking together yeah. and women are sticking together. Yeah. Definitely. And that's really really bad. I talk about the conversation about men and women. People are really on social media. People are really 
not taking time kuangalia na ku discuss this objectively mm. you know it, it, it has become more about ah you as women and yeah. you as men yeah. and i and i think it all comes down to the whole course of what we're discussing today which is mm. being a man in the age of feminism yes back in the days my understanding was as a man piga kiwi utaki kwa 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 na watu mwanamume na bishana na mwanamume na bishana vipi na watu back in those days the loudest Mm. Amen. It's like now we sit to be a near and then to smoke and to smoke. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. to suponge and to sit to skilizi. Kwa hiyo we have to speak. Na kwenye kuongea sasa ndio tunaongea chochote kinachokuja. Na nadhani ni kweli kabisa kwamba conversations zetu I generally don't engage in those conversations. I was actually quite wary about even coming on the show and kind of uh, I know we've been uh, talking about this for yeah, <laughs> months we've talking about this for months yeah we've been discussing with Michael for months yeah. um, and I was like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right um and and partly it's because of how hostile these discussions yeah. can get right where you know essentially as a man you could say something as simple as what i said about the physical differences between men and yeah. women and you get barrage so the same women are weak eh, women are weak kuna yeah. huyu anasema kama wanaume wanawake hawezi na nini eh eh boy code on a story you know boy code on a story at no point did those words come out of my mouth right um so so the, there's definitely that hostility uh, that that you're describing and there's definitely um this sense that it's become men versus women mm. while it, which is a complete corruption yeah. Yeah. of what feminism was supposed to be right um so i used to consider myself a feminist i don't anymore right uh, and it's it's partly because the label has become very much corrupted in a mm. sense where where that label has come to mean this hostile anti men um this men versus women yeah. uh, men are trash men are dogs men are virus in recent yeah. latest year men are corona, uh, men are corona. Um, <laughs> so so the label has come to be associated with all of this i'm like okay i don't agree with mm. with that assessment of men i don't think men are fundamentally trash there's a lot of men who are trash there are many times where i have acted very trash yeah, a lot of women who are trash <laughs> there's also yes. you know equality means there's also women yes. who are trash yes. Yes. equality means there's also women who are dogs or yes. the other way yes. that we're not going to use yeah, the um, b word <laughs> yeah. so 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 that's why we, you know i think maybe nadia's gone through the same thing where she says ah, i'm a humanist or i say i am an equalist mm. or yeah. you know because the label has become so um corrupted and, and, and anti men and the conversation has become very men versus women or yeah. women versus men yeah. so like you're saying uh, this is a lot on kenyan twitter for example kot um where this the phrase boy child the boy child become, yeah. you know a very very big mm. uh, a phrase in in, in in the twitter sphere um because like you're saying men are kind of feeling like they're under attack mm. which i think we should kind of all work towards building uh, alliances mm. and building bridges which is much easier said than done. done yes as humans we kind of tend and this is not a woman thing this is a human thing mm. we kind of tend towards us versus them mm. that's the fundamental thing about sexism that's the fundamental thing about racism that's mm. the fundamental thing about nationalism any ism any any type of of ism i segregation ism you know yeah. where <laughs> where it's it's you're a psychologist so of course you know you probably can speak with more depth on this you should but <laughs> but we kind of tend to put ourselves in in groups versus yeah. out groups where we say in group my group is me me I'm a black mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so sisi wa black bana tupate corona yeah you yeah. and then we have we start this whole hoax of blacks don't get corona and then people start getting it and dying yeah. in fact in in some cases at a higher rate than yeah. the other and you're like oh shit Then, this was a hoax yeah. this is real yeah. um or it's it's how historically men have subjugated women in 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 in, in some senses where men say us mm. versus them yeah. um and now it's the opposite where some sections of feminism are us versus them and men are trash and men are mimi but women are saints and women are angels and it's like yeah, no the, the reality is a little more complex than us versus them yeah 
Wow, Nadia, how are we as <laughs> back in the same question here? Um, and I'm saying this because I know for a lot of people who are listening to the podcast, um, but we well, it's it's an internet thing. So most of us are not on one access. Now I'm born as a Yeah. And I think a lot of them are struggling with this thing. You know, um, that is why I have a, a cousin brother, Balkan and Yambia. You guys, so my come over. You're lucky. For us, it's really really hard right now. Mm-hmm. You know, it is really yeah. hard. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Well, <laughs> but his concept was so his, co- say, oh, <laughs> his his thinking was it's it, he thinks that it is so difficult now for him mm-hmm. and the uh, Wato Mirake, he's a little bit younger than me. Now Wato Mirake kweza ku even kuwa na conversation ya kawaida mm. na women without comparison kwanza kutokea yeah. you know yeah. so and i think that also that is a kubwa ndio ilopo what being a man at the age of yeah. i always say yeah. wazee wetu kama kuharibu wameshaharibu kama kwa wenyewe <laughs> wamekwenda yeah. si jamba age kidogo tunaona mambo ya hivyo so some yeah. of us naweza tukajaribu yeah. lakini kwa wanaokuja chini huko it's even worse for them because now you 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 are, you are in a place ambayo mtoto wa kike na mtoto wa kiume wote wana opportunity sawa yeah. and then you can, you can only excel if you are good at what you do yeah. it doesn't matter if you're a man oh alafu tujaandaa watoto wetu wa kiume yes kwamba eh unaona dunia isha badilikane because um a friend of mine aliniambia kwamba all his life mm. alikuwa amekaa kwenye relationship na wasichana ambao they look up to him Mm. Kwa the will go on a funny shit and bachana on bia fan. And then I can realize kwamba hiyo inafanya ya kuwe. Mm. So now I'm a kind of to buy you could free kuongea mm. to speak her mind mm. that's coming. Ah, it's a challenge for mm. him. It's a big challenge. Yeah. But it's a challenge that he has to deal with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that is pro- and that is way this world is heading. Yeah. Kwamba a lot of women now they can speak their minds yeah. they can say no yeah. they're getting good call officers you know you look at Nadia she has own business but the end of it come yeah. so now business gonza in a very cool she has a very rich business she has a very rich business so now i think a lot of men do not know how to deal with that yeah. Yeah. And that is your challenge kubwa yeah. inapokuja kwa issue we discuss now. Because yeah. as a man unapenda kuwa leader, yes. unapenda kuwa kiongozi mm, yes. na nini? Yes. And then as a leader you don't want your authority question. Yeah. But nowadays you get women who question your authority. Yeah. Na ndani na ndani ni nani ni ni um muhimu kuangalia pia kwa upande wa, wa kwamba sio tu as a man we're not prepared. I think we go back to the thing kwamba we're not prepared and then you are getting mixed messages mm. za za um bado utakuwa expected kufanya some of the yes. traditional yeah. roles uh, but some of those other traditional um where basically the 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 uh, traditional responsibilities kama umebaki nazo lakini zile traditional privileges yeah. 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 right yeah. so kwa <laughs> hiyo <laughs> ni kwamba privilege yako ya nani tume tumekunyanganya lakini date utalipia wewe mbwa yes <laughs> yes you so, pay for the date but yeah, yeah, I get but, you. but yeah. you don't get any of it you don't get any yeah. used to get for yeah. like, so of course it's 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 it's, it's uh, disillusioning in a, in in a in a sense i was fortunate um and i was being interviewed yesterday and i kind of had time to reflect on this has been interviewed about my upbringing and i was fortunate that i i am born in a family with three sisters mm-hmm. and a mother and all of them are incredibly vocal incredibly assertive um incredibly leading ladies mm-hmm. in their own right you know my my mom has founded over three to four organizations that she leads uh, my sister has always been in leadership roles her entire life my little sister is at the heart of, of the covid thing in new york right now um, she's uh, in, in the medical field she's a leading light in her own way my youngest sister was only 15 she's in leadership positions at her school and whatever so i've i've, I've been fortunate to kind of have those models of leading women of um, vocal assertive uh, women I've had very many uh, bosses who've been women um, so so I've been lucky in that sense fortunate in that sense that it's not strange 
for me, right? It's it's normalized. What's mm-hmm. meant to be normal has been normalized in my own life. So it's not a shock when I have a business partner, uh, Tulanana, who's a lady, and she takes charge of things. And it she, doesn't bother you. It doesn't, I don't feel under attack. You don't right? feel less of a man. I don't feel less of a man that um, there are decisions that are Tulananas to make mm-hmm. in our business, and there are decisions that are mine to make in, in, in our business, and we don't view it from the lens of gender pretty much at mm-hmm. all, right? Um, where it's just um, Tulanana is better at this type of decisions mm. so she makes them mm. Prince Lee is better at these types of decisions so he makes them right and and um, my strengths uh, well, another fortunate thing my strengths overlap with her weaknesses and her weaknesses overlap with mine so we kind of balance each other out and it's not even about the gender thing it's just I've been lucky to find a business partner who um, kind of anani ziba mapengo yangu na mimi na ziba ya kwake so I don't feel under threat or under mm. attack that oh jamani mwanamke huyu atakiwi kukwambia hivi huyu si nini na nini anasemaje mtatumiaje hiyo hela hiyo hela si nini na nini na nini na nini umekaliwa kichwani you know the whole na nini because I've not seen it modeled in my home life yeah. I've not seen it in, in, in my life. career yeah. or in my work life so I've been fortunate but I understand at the same time mm. that there are men who've not had these models mm. and that it's not they're not lashing out from a place of kwamba they hate women mm. or they're not lashing out from a place of whatever it's just they've never had these models they've been taught traditionally or observed their mm. own family life where the father is the ultimate um uh, uh, decision maker and the de facto leader who his word is you know final. is final mm-hmm. and then you have this eh, uh, feminist uh, girlfriend who's you know telling you when you should come back hey, hey, mungu wangu afanyaje huku na nini na nini then you are with your boys and they're like hey mwanangu if you put yourself in 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 his shoes mm. his struggles are very different from mine yeah, right yeah. and so you understand it that you know it doesn't justify it mm. but you understand where it's coming from yeah nadia what's to take from the um, therapist yes. <laughs> okay so i'll build up from what Prince said yes um and i think the most important point he had is we need to start empathizing with mm. one another mm. like we need to put ourselves in the other person's shoes and mm. try to think about how they're feeling and how and what they're going through mm. in that in that context yeah. i think the minute we start doing that we will not have any issue with feminism also feminism is basically like inclusivity yeah. feminism includes even the disabled it includes mm. all humans mm. it's not just about female male it includes All, the whole LGBTQI mo- most of us are getting caught up with the fact that okay feminism is about men and women it isn't okay. like yes it is about men and women but it's about all of us like all human beings under the sun whether you are crippled or whether you are disabled of any with any disability whether you are disabled with a mental illness that's also a disability of form whether you are a man you're a woman you're a lesbian you're gay you're transsexual bisexual you're a polyamorous You name it. What? You Google it. Big red translator. Hey, hey. This is where you this is where you come in. Oh yeah, as the resident big red translator. Yeah. Poli manake wengi. I'm on us manake kupendana. Manake poli I'm on manake you. What are kupendana na watu? Yeah, you have more wengi. multiple partners. Wengi sana bongo. Keep going man. So yeah, so feminism is about that. It's about all of us. Mm. Now, a lot of us we are having issues because we are caught up with it's a fight one mm. it's like now it's a fight us versus them mm-hmm. yes it's the us versus them and then we've left out all these people who are already supposed to be included also because mm. now it's a fight between the men and the women we're leaving out everyone else yeah. who's out there that needs equality as well mm. and we're focusing on just this battle between between the two of us yeah. you know between the men and the women yeah which is we're completely losing the essence of what feminism is. Mm. And 
most people, especially for today, humans are lazy. I like saying that, and it's true. Human beings are lazy. Like, I'm lazy. Me too. Everyone's lazy. Mm-hmm. We're, we're built yeah. to not do a lot of things. Yeah. Like, our brains take over all these important functions. Like, think of, you don't have to think about your heart beating. Yeah. That is an important function. But we don't even, we don't even think about breathing. Which is, an, I mean, if you stop breathing, you're dead. Mm-hmm. So, I really want humans to are lazy. Like, point blank, we're just... Just, just. And stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Big words about it. Something, yeah. just, something worse. Putting us lazy and stupid. We need, to be, we need to be very self-aware. Self-awareness is important. In a really we need to it. Kwamba mimi, as a woman, I'm insecure because of X, Y, Z. And so maybe sometimes the reactions are coming from my insecurity as Nadia, yeah. as a woman. Yeah. Not coming from the fact... Um, from how Michael treated me or how mm-hmm. Princey treated me. No, they're coming from Nadia's insecurities, the mm-hmm. end. Mm-hmm. When you're not self-aware, that's when you say you're being uh, patriarchal and you're, mm-hmm. you're pressing me down and you're, you're trying to like rule over me because you, you're a man, you think you're better than mm-hmm. me. No, no. Mm-hmm. Probably it's coming from a place where he's noticed your weakness and he's trying to assist you or he's trying to cover up that weakness. Yeah. But because you are insecure, or you're going through your own internal issues, yeah. you're seeing that as under the lens of feminism. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. feminism is today. Mm. You're seeing it from that lens. A feminist yeah, and, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so that's yeah, how you're too. responding mm. and reacting. Yeah. And same for men. Some men have their own insecurities and have their own deficits and their own shortcomings. And so when a strong woman comes along who is outright feminist mm. and plays on those insecurities, yeah. we retaliate. Yeah. Because, hey, you're making me feel these insecurities that in any other day, I do not want them to see the light of day. Yeah. You know, and so that's how we end up attacking one another because we're probably playing at each other's insecurities and shortcomings and all these things that are uncomfortable mm. for ourselves. Yeah. So the minute we start becoming self-aware that these are my insecurities, if someone comes along and triggers that, you are aware that, okay, they're not, they're not being patriarchal or they're not being condescending. It's just m- me. This, this is a, a, a thing I'm having. This is an insecurity yeah. that I have. And then you will be able to respond appropriately. Mm-hmm. But if you don't know, you'll just react. Mm-hmm. So I always tell people, respond, don't react. Mm-hmm. Reaction is like that. You, you don't think about it. Mm-hmm. Humans... We are the only species that has a frontal lobe. You know that front part yeah. of your brain? Yeah. We are the only species that... That can... I know, that I know. <laughs> 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 that was my only You like you are. We are the only species that can rationalize. Mm. But then a lot of us do not use mm. our rational part of our brain. We just true. react. We're just acting from this primitive area. Yeah, reptilian. Reptilian brain. brain. We're just, yeah, just, okay. just, just <laughs> reacting yeah. from our emotions and yeah. all these triggers. Yeah. You know, and that's why I say we're lazy because it takes time to rationalize. Yeah. You have to weigh, you have to see what is from my reptilian brain, what is unconscious, yeah. what is my unconscious bias, and what is actually happening. Yeah. You need to sit down and make those decisions. Yeah. But a lot of us, like a lot of us don't do it. <clears throat> we just react. We are reacting to traffic police you react to your past event and fail you're like what did I do now you're angry meanwhile he's just stopping you to tell you your money hey for your own safety mm, change your time yeah. but you already reacted mm. in this negative way from your past experience mm. and that's what's happening today with this feminism we're yeah. just reacting oh I saw my mother my father abused her or oh, whatever she was oppressed and then every time a man tries to do something for you, you're, yeah, yeah, you're yeah, reacting that. to that experience. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's also true. But when we so are we are so, reacting instead of responding. Instead of responding. Mm. Responding takes a lo- lot more time because mm. you have to sit down, weigh rationalize. the consequences, rationalize, look at the pros and cons, look at what, what am I bringing to this situation? Yeah. What are they bringing? Yeah. What is the outcome I want? Yeah. That's the most important. If you say, okay, um, feminism is bullshit, what is the outcome you want from that statement? Mm, mm. Do you want us to not be equal? Mm. Is that your goal? Because then every, every if you say men are trash, if you say men are trash, what do you mean? Do you not mm. like your son, your father, mm. your boyfriend? Do you not want a man mm. in your life? And all men are trash except yes, that except has to be this is strong. Yeah, you are very strong. Yeah, no, all men are trash except. 
accept. Exactly. Now, no, we still must say, no, 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 no. We as men, we stick together. Yeah. 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 Well, we we to to what? Yeah, 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 yeah. From your yeah. grandfather to your mother to your son that you're going to have. You know, but in, in, in a sense, in a sense, um, there are certain similarities, and, mm. and uh, I might say something that might sound controversial. Ah, keep going. Um, but <laughs> so maybe I can pick my words. We carefully. like controversial. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there are also evolutionary. Uh, biological and evolutionary psychological differences between mm-hmm. men and women that also are part of this cognitive dissonance that um, we we are experiencing in today's age mm-hmm. and I'll break that down mm-hmm. um, so there there are some differences between men and women that are uh, very obvious our physiology is different you know my Male parts are very different from Nadia's female parts, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but then there are also psychological um, like underpinnings that are different in a sense. Mm-hmm. Where, for example, women um, reward in a in a in a in a dating sense, for example, mm-hmm. women generally um, reward men who lead. And, and by reward, I mean they are more attracted to them. They are more um, they give them the rewards of the dating marketplace. So basically, mm-hmm. men are getting these mixed messages that we've been talking about throughout the show. Mm-hmm. Where, um, on one hand, society tells them uh, men and women are equal, but then they interpret it as, I expect, you know, like we can go 50-50, um, you, you, you don't have to be the leader, we can, you know, I can lead, yeah. but the rewards go to the man who act the men who act traditionally mm. alpha right the men who act uh, traditionally masculine mm-hmm. um, are the ones who are more successful in the dating in, in the dating market and in the case she can say what to her yeah wakati ambao kwa dada anasema among the 50 50 and the bit come in lakini mwanaume ambaye ukienda kwenye date anaweza akalipa ndio ndio atakaye faidi let's put it there let's put it there so mwanaume ambaye atalipa atampitia dada atarudisha nyumbani na nini hiyo ndio atonekana fresh and ingawa huko sasa hivi tunaambiwa kitu 50 we go that shit tunafanya hivi and even even in terms of leading like the 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 relationship right like the dynamics of the relationship generally speaking um, both from my own experience and from experiences speaking with other men and observing other men and observing the, the dating marketplace like I said I'm not married like you so I'm still out here uh, dating uh, a variety of people um, and <laughs> <He's> busy <laughs> yeah, yeah and and um, the like from my own observations and and, 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 and and whatever you you still see that when the man kind of leads the dynamics of the relationship things go a little smoother right and and I'm sure there's there's different perspectives here and we could have a whole argument mm-hmm. about that but from what I've observed what I've read what I've heard from um, other people okay. those dynamics of the traditionally masculine whatever are more rewarded while Kwamblomo Right? We're not being told that. So there's even men who argue that that's like a, a, a shit test. Like it's a, it's a test that to our own my weak men to know to know what I mean. You know what I mean? You know It's an elimination <laughs> so whatever is toxic about the traditional uh, masculine roles but kept the stuff that women kind of reward right um, so so it's, it's, there's, there's that dissonance as well alafu inafanya kwamba wanaume wanaenda sasa extreme right and akua traditional masculine to the extreme mm. forgetting that uh, w- when we think of um, i'm, I'm going to talk about archetypes another big word will break it down um we we kind of forget that there are more masculine archetypes than the warrior and the king yes. archetype right because mm-hmm. when we think of traditional masculinity we think of a man as a king or we think of a man as a warrior. Mm. Those two are the traditional roles that we kind of think 
of mm. these are the archetypes. An archetype is is um, is basically like a, a foundation of mm. of, um, of how people act, and it's a it's a role that people play, and it's it's happened over many many times in history that it's a type, mm. right? So when we think of like our, our basic assumption of, of what a man is is he's a king. Or he's a warrior, a right? Conqueror. Is a conqueror. Yeah. Both of these are, yeah. you know, very. Um, when we think of alphas, that's what we think of, yeah. right? But we forget that throughout history, uh, women have rewarded men beyond these two roles. It's not a new thing to um, to to for for women to reward people who are not traditionally king or warrior. I'll give you a very um, um, uh, good example. Uh, think of any rock star that you know, and then artist, a big, an artist, let's say Diamond Platinum's here in, 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 in yeah. Tanzania. He, he is somebody that very many women find extremely attractive, mm. right? He's not, uh, not, not because of the king or warrior, he's not a king or a warrior in, in, in those yeah. senses of the word, but there are other archetypes. There's king, warrior, magician, lover, right? These are all different archetypes. These are the top of the food chain. <laughs> <laughs> I got you that. In whatever, exactly. Yeah, in whatever the the archetype, you are at the top of the food chain. Yeah. And, and uh, our societies and women have generally rewarded all these different archetypes. Mm. But what's toxic or what's, what's problematic with uh, certain views of, of, of masculinity is where you, you replace... Um, uh, like the, the the sides of um, of men, you know, men who like sing with a very sultry voice. You know, if you think yeah. of if you break down Diamond, for example, sings with a very sultry voice and does these very um, dance feminine dance, dance moves, yeah. right? Very feminine dance moves, but he's still considered super um, attractive by you know many sections and. and Maybe some people might not want, you know, Diamond, but think of any R&B singer you can think of, yeah, right? Yeah. The Bruno Mars or you, whoever. Yeah. They're not your traditionally masculine men, but we forget that what it meant to be traditional masculine included a much broader mm. spectrum wow. of, 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 of men as artists. But you are extremely competent as an artist men as magicians, but you are extremely competent as, as magicians. The new magicians today are people in tech, for example. Yeah. Um, you find somebody like Bill Gates or Elon Musk who, yeah. are, who in their own sense are completely socially inept. In, you know, like when they were growing up, for example, there are these dorks, what they would be called dorks or dweebs or whatever. Nerds, whatever. Uh, yeah. nerds. Um, uh, but, but they've gotten the rewards of our society extremely handsomely. Um, and are extremely attractive uh, men mm. because they have been extremely competent magicians. They what they do is like magic, man. Like they, they, they you know, somebody's going to take you to space. You know, Elon Musk or, yeah. or, or uh, Bill Gates with the computing revolution, etc. So there's 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 um, masculine roles that are not what you think of as this macho um, warrior thing, which. Granted, women are very attracted to, um, but there's 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 um, types beyond that. There's archetypes beyond that that you have to kind of, as a man, find what you are most naturally inclined to, and then be competent. Now, I've re I've, I've, I've repeated the word uh, competent so much because the, the truth is that whether it's in the age of feminism or in in uh, in the old ages or back when we were hunter-gatherers, the men who were the most competent got the rewards of their society, mm -hmm. regardless of, of, of whatever um, their competence is in. So I am the most competent ironsmith, fantastic. I am the biggest, uh, strongest warrior who can lead others into war, Go, competent man. You, you look and, at you, know, and you look at this guy, um, what was his name, uh, mm. what was his name? The uh, sad Casanova. Oh, Casanova, yeah. yeah. He was really good at what he was Exactly. Yeah. Very competent. Very competent. <laughs> they made a song about him. Very competent, very competent lover, you know, which is, which is one of the, the archetypes yeah. of, of men as lovers. And, and there's, you know, the whole, you know, Prince Charming, whatever, whatever. Mm. And, and there is, you can get super competent. You, you've got super competent kings like uh, Genghis Khan, mm. who up to today, um, he, I think about, 
five percent, one to five percent, I don't remember the exact number, of uh, Asian population can trace their, their yeah, yeah. genetics back to one man. Right? Uh, Genghis Shout Khan. Out, hey, Shout out Shout Genghis out. Khan. He was the man. <laughs> he was the man's man. Yeah, he was the man's man. He did whatever, but he was super competent, hyper competent at what he did. And so as men, if you cut out all the bullshit and you cut out all the noise, mm-hmm. right? And you're trying to look for what should I be? Oh, feminism. Oh, there's all these yeah. things and people were under attack. <laughs> well, it's been true throughout history that if you are a competent man, if you're good at what you do, and you are one of the top at what you do. You will get the women, you will get the money, you will get you know, you'll get the resources that you'll be rewarded. You'll be rewarded by this society. So call to Kurudi call an overball when a pen of your tongue. You know what Kitonga is? Kitonga is like slope. Slope. Downhill slope. You know you'll be back your tongue. So now to make use of Kamba, Kuna no go how a penny fanya kazi. What a penda kuleleo and a kuangayo and which come in the one same what a penda to talk as in the yes slide. Can you slow by? Do you think why in a you be? No one and Gaika Santa Claus, Mika Santa Pusena, so Zimala being a baby. And in a Mia, it is exactly true. I was reading. <laughs> I was reading a friend of mine's uh, tweet about this song, Susanna. Mm. Um, by Salty Soul. By yeah. Salty Soul, Nura, shout out Nura. Yeah. And she was. I don't know, Nura. I don't know. trash. Yeah, yeah. Nura. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but shout out. Yeah. And she made a very good point. Um, about the song Susanna, and she was like, Ah, Susanna is a broke boy's anthem. Right? Yeah, she, and now you, you even that. talked about it. You yeah. even talked about it, right? Yeah. And um, I was like, Yeah, I agree with that. Because if you look at, at what these guys are essentially complaining about uh, in the song, is that, Oh, Susanna, some guy who's more competent than me has taken you. Mm. Right? Yeah, and they, they, they didn't phrase it that way. It's but, a little bit. But he's, okay. why is he richer than you? Because he's competent. Exactly. Yeah. He's better at, at, uh, at life than you are, mm. right? And, and so, you're sitting here complaining instead of analyzing yourself and saying, hey, look, man, I should be more competent. Now, the competence doesn't have to necessarily be wealth. You know, mm. I have to maybe put a nuance yeah. there, right? Uh, the, the, the peop, you know, the people who are just extremely physically well endowed and that's also super attractive. Mm. Um, there's people who are really good speakers and that's super attractive. <laughs> <laughs> There's people. <laughs> hey! There's people. To keep playing, you need to turn it on. Who's doing? Who's doing? I'm who's doing? I'm a black guy. Anyway, um, there's the so so basically, it's it's as a man. What I've been learning, right? Um, as a man, is that I have to pick an area. And for me, I've picked storytelling, and I've picked you know speaking and writing and thinking and yeah. helping people speak and write and think. Yeah. Um, and I've said, you know, I'm going to try and be as competent as I can oh, that, in yeah. these whatever. And I've got really great support from uh, Tula Nana. I've got really great support from my sister Zoe. I've got really great support from my family mm. um, and from the clients that we get. They kind of look at you as a, as an expert, and they kind of allow you to thrive. And so that gives you, you know, the motivation to continue yeah. to be um, to, to improve yourself and but, so, yeah. but but as a man if you continue regardless of feminism regardless of toxic masculinity any regardless of the noise um, around you if you as a man decide to be centered and we kind of talked about this in the mm-hmm. beginning if you if you as a man decide to be centered and and and, and have a locus have yourself as the locus of your um, attention all these other things follow. If you spend too much time chasing uh, women, you don't get them. But if you spend uh, so much time working on yourself and improving yourself, they come. How true is that, Maggie? It's very true. (laughs) 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 Nothing else. That's it. it. (laughs) No, it's true because people are attracted to to people who are. When you're working on yourself, that means you're more aware of Mm. yourself, and you're Mm. more able to treat me. Um, as a unique human being that I am, mm. you know, people who are not self-aware, who haven't worked on themselves, who aren't really putting enough time in themselves. Mm. Uh, how, if you can't put in time for you into yourself, how, how are you gonna put in time for, for me? me? Mm. Mm. You know, so it's the same with with love. Like people who can't love themselves and mm. feel don't feel sorry for themselves or don't care about themselves, 
mm. they're not gonna be able to care for another person because you're the first template. Mm. You know, you first tested out yourself. If you can't give all those things that you are claiming to be giving others, mm. Mm. then mm. It, it, it's, it, it's a lie. Yeah, and, and that's where and trouble I, happens. I don't know if you agree with me as as a man as well. You're you're a married man, so tread carefully here. <laughs> but <laughs> and my wife listens to a lot of these things. Sometimes before they even go out. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. tread carefully here. But if you think, you know, um, if you think back maybe to mm. when you were still in the dating scene, or even if you think about your mm. current uh, um, uh, life with your with your life mm. partner, um, there are women that you meet who kind of challenge you to a point where you're like, oh shit, I still have a lot to work on mm. on myself. And I've recently had an experience like that. Not not yeah. too long ago, just last year. I had a few experiences like that. I was like, oh, hey, hey, hey princely, you know, you, you thought you're as good as you thought, right? Yeah, you're not as good as you thought. And, 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 and you need that. And yeah, you definitely need, need that. that. You definitely need that. that. So I've had experiences like that where it's, you know, one or two people who you've met and, and there's an area of your life which you thought you had worked on mm. and you hadn't. Yeah. And these people are kind of reminders that, hey, my brother, that you are really good at all these other things but, but you're not good at this one thing and it's important to me yeah. right and it it kind of is a kick in the balls and it kind of like wakes you up and you're like hey bro you've still got a lot to prove yeah. about yourself and so if you look at it from from that perspective that's that's like one of the tricks i've learned that if i look at it from the perspective of i'm constantly trying to be a better version of princely mm-hmm. and i'm constantly trying to be more competent Right, I'm, I'm constantly trying to be better at something. Yeah. You know, I'm putting in the work, the ten thousand hours or whatever it's going to take for me to be one of the best in this country um, in storytelling, in communications, in uh, strategic thinking, in whatever I have decided to to focus my attention on. Then society will reward me yeah. with 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 jobs mm-hmm. with. Uh, women relationships and love and whatever mm. with male friendships yeah, yeah. with you know like society will reward you if yeah. you truly rather than focusing on all the noise outside of you mm. focusing on yourself which is a lot harder yeah. than it is and you always have to be reminded by people outside of you hey wanangu bado kaze jaisha yeah that is why Nadia comes to the point you always make about proper uh, 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 support system mm. yeah Um, and also, in, in that sense, how, how we, our initial reaction to people around us mm-hmm. is information. Mm-hmm. So as Princely saw that, okay, these relationships I've been in, um, they kind of made me realize that, okay, there's mm-hmm. elements of myself that I really, I thought I worked on, but I haven't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's basically what these human interactions are for. Mm-hmm. You know, they're indicators to show us that, okay, you're really, you've really worked on this part of yourself and you're doing great. Yeah. And it can show in yeah. your interactions. Yeah. When you haven't really, and there's still more work that you need to put into yourself, yeah. you will feel it. You'll get that feedback yeah. from yeah. people. Yeah. You know, so constantly observing and looking at, okay, are men treating me in this way because they're yeah. trash? Mm. Or because I allow it? Mm. Or because there's something in me that I haven't really worked on? Yeah. When you start looking at external reactions mm. in a way... to self improve mm. then your outlook on mm. feminism on men on women on the disabled community in general oh, <laughs> all of us yeah. will be different yeah. because you're looking to learn you're not looking to criticize yeah. judge yeah. or point fingers because again they always say when you point fingers there's like three more three or four fingers or whatever um, however long much. finger how many fingers oh, you have a mathematician I respect that. I respect that. So there's always things that you can learn from the situation yeah. that teach you about yourself. Yeah. You know, and we need to watch it. A lot of us are not too bandwagon. Some people don't even know what the whole feminism is about. I see it on Twitter. These women are acting all crazy on Twitter, or these women are like going on protests, or etc. And we jump. Mm. We don't even know what we're jumping on. Mm. Maybe it's it's human trafficking that we're jumping on. And yeah. Next thing we know, we're being sold. <laughs> yeah. You know? Um, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Kiswahili unaweza kushadaria. Shadaria. You are excited mwenyewe but yeah. you don't know where you're going. Yeah. We need to stop. We need we need to stop being lazy. Yeah. Okay, for both of you as as we're winding up, another this conversation could go for two days. Yeah. Do you think can we look at uh feminism mm. and what is doing to men as a blessing now? Mm. As in if you use it wisely for a lot of men okay, can actually take time mm. na kujifanya a little bit of self actualization a self analysis na vitu kama we do yeah. can we can we look at it from that perspective yeah so i read something recently um, from a man i admire and respect who said something along the lines of the good thing about being a man is that society doesn't even pretend to give a shit about you hey we're <laughs> so like, <laughs> so that's the can you can you write back again yeah it's like the good thing about being a man is that society doesn't even pretend to give a shit about you right because there are instances where you go online and you see you know like that as a man you put a, a picture for example and a woman puts a picture you have all these people who like the girl who don't like the girl oh my god you look so great you know and even come on now una pambana na ya yes right and nobody <laughs> even pretends that they give a shit about yeah, you right yeah. and you could see that as a bad thing and say oh you know, nobody gives a shit about me and you could sit there and whine about it but that's not being a man and that's not being competent mm-hmm. right if you view it from a place of self improvement like Nadia was saying then it's like okay so the world doesn't give a shit about me mm-hmm. so i have to give a shit about myself yeah. i have to work on um, improving myself mm-hmm. i have to work on um, on on becoming the best version possible prince mm-hmm. me that i i can be i will fail miserably many times i will be reminded that by many people yeah. that i am still a failure in many ways yeah. but the parts that i have selected to be competent at i'm going to try my best to be as competent as possible in a sense what feminism has um done but what has been true with or without feminism is that the world doesn't give a shit about you as a man you have to give a shit about yourself and mm-hmm. feminism is just reminding you that listen there are parts the sections of you guys that that um, need some work yeah. and there are parts of masculinity uh, that are indeed uh, toxic mm-hmm. now don't take that message as masculinity is toxic yeah. Yeah. because that's that's the thing that the message has come kind of become that being masculine is toxic and so you 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 end up thinking that oh women are saying that masculinity is toxic so I have to be more like a woman and then you become more like a woman and reward you. nobody <laughs> rewards you you know me say eh jamari ni nataka kama nani and so you 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 kind of you 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 you're like oh but i thought yeah. you know and so you become bitter and you become uh, yeah. whatever oh I, i thought if i became more like this yeah. um, i would get the rewards but no work on yourself nobody yeah. gives a shit about you nobody gives a shit about prince lee or michael yeah, or whatever you have to give a shit about yourself you have to i, I think you're going to bleep out a lot of these yeah, but the rewards <laughs> you probably won't <laughs> <laughs> you have to give a damn about yourself <laughs> and you have to 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 um, improve uh, yeah. yourself and become competent because for me that's what it means to be a man. I I completely agree with this. Like the minute you start focusing on yourself then even the women bashing men will not it affect really you. It, it will not it will not touch you. Yeah. You will see them and you will probably empathize with them yeah. and probably see maybe where they're coming from yeah. and the pain that they're going through yeah. and you will better treat them. Yeah. You know so when you start working on yourself in this sense then it, it doesn't maybe maybe the women themselves they will evolve maybe it's a reaction maybe when they say all oh, men are toxic and men are the worst it's coming from a hurt place mm-hmm. and a place of lack of awareness mm-hmm. but the minute let's say again some, at some point someone needs to be the bigger person and put on the shoes mm-hmm. um the big boy pants or the big girl pants or whatever mm. it, it someone needs to 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 be that person mm. when we all decide oh we're all going to be pigs and lay around in the mud mm. then we're going to be pigs mm. playing in the mud mm. the end mm. but maybe one of us pigs decides i don't want to play in the mud anymore i want to get out we'll inspire other pigs to get out of the mud and sure. start living cleaner safer lives mm. i don't know why i'm using pigs but anyway, but we get things <laughs> from but, things but you, you know so so men are pigs now <laughs> <laughs> wow. i said all of us are pigs even the women like <laughs> 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 equality men and women are pigs 
corona. Yeah, the 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 corona. You know, so when you start focusing on yourself and you start sh- like shining the light to you mm. and start seeing, okay, what is this telling me? What does yeah, this feedback yeah. mean yeah. for me yeah. and my yeah. growth? Then That's you will treat the world from that space as well because now you're seeking to understand. It's, a lot healthier. See, it's mm-hmm. very much healthier. Because when you seek to understand, then you can be, people will understand you, mm. you know? Mm. When you're just trying for people to understand you without trying to understand them, how are you going to hear people? Because if we're all out here trying to be understood, <laughs> no one's going to understand no one. Understand yeah. no one. Yeah. So when we start to first understand ourselves yeah. and understand others, then, then we will understand what feminism is. And a lot of this is easier said than done. A lot yes. of what I've said, a lot of what Nadia has said is easier to say yeah. than do it, but exactly. you have to do it. It's yeah. necessary. It's necessary. I mean, I have this thing in my office. Uh, mm-hmm. You guys can't see it, obviously. Doing, but the, work doing the work is, is the, the shortcut. shortcut. Yo. We're always looking for shortcuts, yeah. but then when you put in the yeah. work, that, that is, is the, the actual that shortcut. That is the only proper shortcut. Yeah. The end, because yeah. that's the only way you'll get to what you that's want to achieve. exactly what we're saying. Yeah. yeah. So, in short, <laughs> To sum up, being the work of the shortcut. <laughs> yeah. And to sum me, I'm competent. Competent. Yeah. If you are a man, you want to get the rewards from our society, regardless of how you define those rewards, yeah. you have to be a competent man. Mm. Nobody wants a weak man. Nobody wants, uh, and by weak, I mean incompetent. Yeah. So, so make sure I don't mean weak in the traditional yeah. sense. Yeah. So Competence. work be on com- being a more competent man. That's what I tell myself and that's what I try to do. Yeah. And for all the women listening, same advice goes to <laughs> Yeah. Be better. Yeah. Be better. So yeah, that's it from us. I, it has been... It's been full of big words, but hey, <laughs> we made it through. We, we made it. Yeah, we made it through. And then you can reach us out on at made the podcast both on Instagram and on Twitter. Princely, you can reach him out. He has um, uh, the company that he's leading. His own company. Uh, you, you, can, you can check them out at honorstories.com. Like in the up on Twitter and on Instagram, both of to me at honorstories. With Nadia, you know what to do. Mind Matters TZ, Mind Matters TZ, both on Twitter and on Instagram. And there, you can link it up on your website. And then you can come to a fancy office. Kamadi can pack up the butterflies and put it. It is what it is. Nadia to Michael Barut. Till next time. Peace out. Men, 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 the podcast.